Hello everybody, my name is Mohit Desponde, and uh, in this video, I want to explain how we can plot a histogram in uh, Matplotlib. And I also want to I'll also mention what a histogram is uh, in in Matplotlib. And so, uh, so what, I've, what I'm going to be doing uh, from now on is I'm actually going to be taking this section and commenting it out. And so that way, if you want to know how to make a certain kind of plot, you can always just uncomment uh, the section by removing this line here and this line here, and then you'll have the um, you'll have you be able to show the plots. But uh, anyway, so that's for bar chart. And then uh, in in this video, what we'll be doing is actually uh, plotting a histogram. And so you might be asking, first of all, what is a histogram? And and so a histogram uh, is it's very similar to a bar chart. Um, but there's some technicalities that um, there's some technicalities that are being brought up. Um, like for example, for uh, for a histogram, the the bars in between or the bars uh, don't touch, or the bars do touch basically. And so with a bar chart, I should say a bar chart, the bars technically don't touch. But with a histogram, the bars do touch. And histograms are particularly important in the field of probability and statistics. So uh, there's a lot of um, there's a thing called distributions, and they have a certain uh, distributions have a certain shape, and to know what the shape of a distribution is, you have to look at the uh, you have to look at the histogram, and by taking by just picking random values from a distribution, you should be able to generate a histogram that looks similar to uh, what the original like what the true value of of the distribution uh, is. And so I've been saying this uh, word a lot. But uh, we can actually go ahead and plot uh, plot the histogram, and, and so kind of one cool thing that we're going to be doing is um, I'm going to I'm going to um, explain a little bit about what uh, this thing called a normal distribution is, and I want to show you uh, basically uh, what it looks like first, because if you know what it looks like. Then uh, when we draw the bar chart, it might be a little bit uh, it'll be clear uh, what the what the final result expect should look like I should say. And so uh, before we actually get to plotting the histogram, I want to take a second and just show uh, what the what the normal distribution looks like. And actually, uh, the normal distribution itself is very 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 widely used, and there's a lot of stuff um, that discusses normal distribution and so uh, what I wanted to do is just to take a few seconds and just at least visually draw it out so that um, you have some idea of what it looks like and so what we're talking about is the normal distribution there are of course other kinds of distributions distribution there are of course other kinds of distributions um, but probably the most famous one is uh, the normal distribution and so when I when I plot this basically with, with the histogram, um, it's going to be like, well, that was a really bad line. Um, it'll basically be uh, kind of like this here. And so here's my line. And the way that the way that it looks like is we have some uh, some mean. I suppose here is my uh, mean. And, and it turns out that the it, the peak of the the peak of the uh, the normal dis distribution is at that uh, mean. So it kind of looks like this. Trailing down here, and then going back to the top here, and then down like that. And so this is what kind of like the normal, and then these actually go out um, to infinity. I should say these actually, oops, that was not good. Um, but these technically do trail outward uh, to infinity in both directions. And so this is basically what the normal distribution looks like. It's kind of like this curve like this. And so here is what the mean of the normal distribution is. And then the, the variance, like what we talked about, Actually determines how how like far this out. So there's a fairly here's one with a fairly small um, uh, sigma or, or variance. I can have a much larger. If I have a larger variance, then what happens is I will uh, end up with something that's going to be more like this. And so you can see that the values are like way more. It's this like peak here is much smaller because all my values are being spread out more. Um, as opposed to this, so, and I, I guess technically with with this, then it should like um, dip off like very quickly, 
here, and then this will be a bit more, it's a bit flatter, basically is what I'm trying to say. So this is the normal distribution, so when we sample from the normal distribution, uh, then we will, you know, then we can expect to see something, uh, something like this. And so I can generate a normal distribution, I just need a mu and a sigma, and so I can say here's my mu and here's my sigma, and so we'll just do something like, uh, well here I can actually just do them separately, mu equals 0 and sigma equals 1, it's a unit normal, um, and so what we can do is generate all of these values, and so we can say um, something like vals equals mu plus sigma times np dot random dot rand n. This will basically just generate a thousand points that fit this normal distribution whose mean is zero and whose sigma is, is one. And then we can plot this again. We can just do plot dot hist and hist is histogram. And then I can just pass in my values and then I can um, another pa parameter I can pass in is like the number of bins basically. Um, and so I can uh, plot that. And so this is really all we need to plot our, uh, to plot our histogram. And so uh, when I can run this. Oh, it takes a second, and you see that, hey, it actually does like compare what this looks like here to to what this looks like, and you see that they're they're not exactly the same, but they they it fits the general scheme, right? And that's basically what happens when when we do this sampling, is that we are, you know, taking we're just kind of picking data from this smooth curve here and we're just like picking discrete data points and so when you I take pick these discrete data points I get a histogram that looks like this and the more data points that I pick and plot the uh, the smoother this will look like and the closer that this distribution actually gets to the true uh, normal distribution but anyway that is um, the that's the histogram and so another thing again so for clarity what we should do is uh, plot the we should mention that we should do the x label. So the x label on the x would just be like bins or values. Um, histograms usually have like bins. For the y label, that is the frequency or the frequency, or you can think of it as like a probability. But we'll just say like frequency. And we can also give it a title. By the way, we can say title um, is something like normal distribution sampled and what I mean by sampling is that's basically what we're doing here is we're just picking a thousand values that uh, fit the normal distribution and then we can just like plot them and the more points that we pick from that distribution the closer it'll you know the closer it'll look like so um, and then one extra component that I want to mention is we can actually have a grid so I can do plot dot grid true and that will actually show like a two by two grid. So it'll become clear when I when I run it and I'll show you. Okay, yeah. So now you can see that we actually get a we actually get like this nice grid here. And so um, we can get this kind of normal distribution here. So I got my labels on and everything looks good. And you can see here's my here's my frequency. So you see that the majority of my um the the, the you know the most frequent uh points are around zero. And that makes sense, right? Because zero is the mean, and I set the deviation to be small, but zero is the mean, and sigma is actually what's called the, the standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance, but that's beside the point. But it, it's the same principle supply. So the larger my sigma value, then the more spread out this is going to be. And what I can do is I can actually increase my sigma value, and we can see you know, how that changes. So I'll change it from like 1 to 10. And when I run it, you can see that it's not as it's not as pointy. It's still a little pointy, but it but it's a bit flatter, if you notice. And let me uh, change it again. To to I'm changing it to 100 now. And so you can see now it's like way more spread out. It just looks like it just it looks the same, but now like consider consider these extremes. And so we're you know spreading out our uh, normal distribution. If I were to zoom in at uh, zero, then you'd see that. You know, it's actually uh, uh, quite flat locally. This is just Matplotlib automatically zooms out for you. Is is the point? So like, so I can just kind of change that back to one here. 
and you know we get our distribution. So notice like the scale of this, right? So anyway, that's where I'm going to stop uh, right here. So uh, in this video, we discussed histograms, and they're a great way to look at distributions of data. If you have a ton of data and you want to know whether it fits a particular distribution, you can put, throw it up into a histogram, um, pull up a you know a ton of figures of histograms, and then of like different distributions, and see well how closely does my uh, how closely does my data fit this particular distribution and so I can kind of like compare um, the compare if my see if my data fits the distribution given a histogram. So anyway that is uh, that is the histogram in Matplotlib.